Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer and broadcaster. And what you're about to hear is one of the roughly 1,400 interviews I did for all major media outlets in Ireland. How do I know there are roughly 1,400 interviews? Because I recently digitised all the damn tapes myself. But do remember, so many of the interviews were done for the print media and recorded on cassette tapes. So some are, let's say, sonically challenged. However, I happen to believe that sonic considerations should at times give way to historical significance. And what you're about to hear sure is historic to me. It's Tom Jones, one of my lifelong favourite singers, who I first interviewed in 1990 and who turned out to be refreshingly straight talking. By the way, if you want to access the full tapes for personal or professional use, for example, in a documentary, you can contact me via my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com. Enjoy the podcast. Okay, that that uh, probably said that that pan splitting was really a, he was was a cover up for something more political for just getting him off the scene. He suggested that other top singers at the time were pussy footed or gay, and that he was the only real man around. Who said that? Probably. Was that? But is I that did. part of the scenario you came out in? Is he casting expressions on you in that? No. Um, he certainly didn't look like a man. I mean, if he claims that he was the only man around, you know, if you remember, he had a fringe and it was down the end and then tight in the back. Ponytail. And he wore buckle shoes and, and velvet suits, you know, so... The Lord Fauntleroy. Exactly. Yeah. And he was t warned. I mean, I, I know because I was there. And I know where he was getting his pants made. A shirt maker was making his pants. He went to get these blousy velvet shirts yeah. made. Because I was having my shirts made by the same shirt maker. And um, I said, you know, laughingly, I said, don't ever make pants for me, I said, because and he said, look, I told PJ Proby that this is not pants material. He said he wanted the same material as his shirts. I said, you make a move in this and it'll go. It's it's shirt material. <clears throat> Do you accept that was just a... But he did him, it. Getting him off the scene, though. Like no, he did it himself. But there, there weren't other people planning to get rid of him? Or no. Wouldn't. He claimed that you then went on, proceeded to steal everything from his act, his arrangements, Charles Blackwell, the whole shot. Not true. Blackwell worked for you know, people like that. Sure, because he was a great arranger and he was around at the time. He was just one of many arrangers that I used. I didn't, he didn't do all... But when you went on to Proby's tour, did you not say, well, i got to design the act to suit these people who were coming to see him? No. The reason that they picked me, that there was a similarity, they wanted a sex symbol, a male sex symbol. And um, uh, the name of the band that suggested it was... It sounds incorporated. They were on the show. Right. They were the band that was working on the show. And they thought, like, now, Proby's got to go because he's splitting his pants and he'd been warned. It wasn't just one, you know, they were yeah. telling him, yeah. you do this anymore and you got to go. So I'd worked on a tour previously with Sounds Incorporated. So, you know, people were discussing, who, who, who's going to... And Sounds Incorporated said, look, there's a new kid on the block. He's just come out with us. And it's not unusual to just right. come out. And they said, this fella... So, so you don't accept all his... Can do it, not at all. He was coming out with bullshit in those days. In yeah. fact, I offered him outside once. These, the have gone in, these have gone into the history books and all that stuff. That's the yeah, worst well, thing about them, you know? He started spouting out about me in a paper, and he says, I can beat Tom Jones on stage or off stage if he wants it. As in fight or singing? Well, the, you know, this is the, what it implied. So I was working at the Palladium. I was singing at the Palladium at the time, and I, after we finished one night, I went into the bag of nails, and he was sitting there. So I said, what do you mean about on stage or off stage? I said, if you got anything on your mind, let's let's go right now. And he said, no, no. He says, Tom, you know that, the, you know, press. He said, it's all bullshit. He said, don't take it seriously. Right. And I said, you ever say anything about me again? I said, I'll break you up. You know what I mean? I told him straight. So the bouncer was saying, Tom, please, no. I mean, it almost got to it right, right there. Right. So I said, look, if you really want to see somebody sing, you come and see me tomorrow night. And he did. There was an... <laughs> I had to take criticism of somebody like, this again was in one of the history books, Walker, who described your singing as tasteless. I know you said he sang in one tone all, tone all the time. Yeah. Didn't you? And he said your quality or the songs and you were, were just all tasteless. Well, it's <clears throat> the only thing I can say about these people I'm going to go at me, it was that I was a threat. Right. So it's, uh, if they didn't say anything, then I wouldn't have bothered them. They were, you mentioned, they were kind of considered major writers at the time. That's coming, right. Coming up. Exactly. Walker Proby, and because mm. all the other ones had been like Cliff and all those had been early, really early in the 60s. That's right. Extended well, they, 50s. Yeah. So, so on the, you know, the new ones on the scene 
was probably uh, Walker. The Walker and, and myself, yeah. and Scott yeah. Walker especially, because he was... Why would you suggest, I mean, they, they, Walker was, though, at the time, rated as a kind of worthy successor to Sinatra, probably whatever way you view him, you know, had a strong voice. He did. He could use it. Oh, definitely. Why would you say both them have fallen by the wayside and you've persevered? Uh, the character. The character is not there. I mean, the, the talent was there, but probably has got a big mouth. And doesn't know... self-destructive. Exactly. Didn't know what to do with it. And Walker? I, I think he had problems. Well, he had some personal problems, yeah. Yeah, and he always did. Was it also he... management, though, too? They seem not to have had somebody like Gordon Mills. Yeah, but Gordon was only... Um, we worked together. I was never... You know, we were never doing this. Because sometimes, you know, Gordon would say... I'd say, Gordon, if you had a bloody deal with some people... And he said, I wouldn't deal with them. He said, if you weren't like you are, I couldn't manage you. Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of the Joe Jackson Interviews podcast. And don't forget, if you want to access the full tapes for personal or professional use, contact me via my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com.